people who are here from the neighborhood. Uh, I also want to thank Prime Minister, the President, the Government of Haiti for their comprehensive recovery plan, for working already to make some changes to make Haiti more attractive to foreign investment, and for doing all this in a way that is designed to have a more broadly shared prosperity than ever before. One of the things that has bedeviled Haiti's previous attempts to establish democracy is the dramatic inequality in distribution of income and opportunity. If this plan is properly in, uh, implemented and all of us do our part, Haitians will rise together. The rich will get richer, but there will be a much, much bigger middle class with poor people pouring into it at a rapid rate. The new laws in the pipeline that would create more secure conditions for investors make it more attractive for the Haitian diaspora to come home and invest, further demonstrate the Haiti's commitment to opening its doors and building a shared future. So I'm very grateful not only to the members of the government, but also to the legislative leaders who are supporting these endeavors and will be dealing with a number of other issues in the future. I want to thank the donors and the multilateral development banks who are here who have been very generous in doing their part for sustainable development. Uh, last week, President Moreno signaled his commitment to create a multi-donor trust fund for budget support, which is very important to the Haitian government, to strengthen the capacity of the civil uh, service and to do what is necessary for the people who aren't going to be caught up in this economic recovery anytime soon, and for the children who need education. Haiti has also secured billions of dollars in recent months of debt relief from the World Bank, the IMF, and other donor governments, including the United States, France, and Canada. Today, we have here MIGA, M-I-G-A, the arm of the World Bank that provides political risk guarantees to foreign investors. That should be an encouraging sign, although I can tell you your political risk in Haiti is lower than it has been in my lifetime. Nonetheless, if you're worried about it, you've got to worry about it. I, I just have to say one thing, uh, not in my notes. I did urge that we have this meeting. But it would not be happening, and there would not be nearly so many people from Latin America and the Caribbean here if it weren't for Luis Moreno. I think he has been an unbelievably visionary, active leader of the Inter-American Development Bank. Uh, and he was the ambassador to Colombia the whole time I was the president. He helped me develop Plan Colombia. And if you wonder whether he can make a success of something, let me remind you that this year we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Inter-American Development Bank in Medellin, which for more years than I care to remember was the home of international narco-trafficking, the Secretary of the Treasury of the United States and a former president with the full blessing of the United States Secret Service went to Medellin because it belongs to the people of Colombia again. And he deserves a lot of the credit. So, that was an unpaid political advertisement for the continuation of the best leadership I have ever seen in the Inter-American Development Bank. We wouldn't be doing this. Uh, I would also like to thank the bilateral donors, and in particular, uh, I am grateful that when we had the donors conference in April, some $350 billion was pledged. And I am grateful that the two countries pledging with the highest percentage of people in their countries of Haitian origin, the United States and France, are the only two that are at least a third of the way home toward already dispersing 
their pledges. One of the one of the parts of my mandate from the U.S. Secretary General was to make sure that that United Nations Governors Conference was not a fraud, and that we didn't have one more international meeting where people said, oh, "I'll give this money," and then it never happens. So I want to thank the government of France for dispersing one third of the money that it has uh, uh, committed. And I want to thank the government of the United States, represented here by the Chief of Staff and Counselor to the Secretary of State, Cheryl Mills, who's been to Haiti, I think, even more than I have since we started this endeavor. The United States has dispersed 38% of the money that it promised in April. We all need to do that. We need to, whatever we say we're going to do, we need to keep our word. The Haitians have had pie in the sky promises from local people and foreigners for long enough. It's better to promise less and deliver more. And so I want to thank the donors who are delivering what they say.